Professor. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm assuming you guys can see my screen as well. So hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the M365 virtual marathon, no matter where you are. This session is an introduction to AI Builder for the Power Platform. My name is Reza Dorani. I am a business applications MVP. Let's move ahead to slide number two. Please note that the SharePoint conference and the Microsoft 365 conference now will be held next year in Las Vegas, Nevada on March 23rd to the 25th. Fingers crossed on that one. Really hope the COVID-19 crisis eases off for everyone. Also, please let's not forget to thank all our generous sponsors here. We are talking about an event that's held virtually, but we have, have got so much traction in terms of all our sponsors, so it's very important to give a huge shout out to, to all our sponsors. So thank you so much to everyone who is sponsoring this event. All right, moving ahead to our next slide. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Reza Dorani. I am based out of Houston, Texas. However, currently, thanks to COVID, I am in quarantine in San Diego, California. Not a bad place to be. I am a principal consultant for an organization known as Catapult Systems. We are based out of Texas primarily, but we are nationwide. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. I focus on all things Power Platform, and I am also a Power Platform community super user. So if none of you guys have ever heard about the Power Platform community, at the end of the session, I'll share a link and please make sure that you get plugged into the community where you can get help and you can help others. I am born in uh, India based out of Mumbai, so my accent might be a little Indian. Uh, at the same time, I have a little bit of heritage uh, oriented to Iran. So India, Iran, and now guess what? I am also a citizen, a proud citizen of the United States of America. And finally, I am a very avid YouTuber. I think that's my current obsession right now. I share a lot of good stuff around the Power Platform on YouTube. So if you guys haven't checked me out on YouTube or check my videos out on YouTube, please go ahead and uh, make sure you, you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hopefully by the end of the session, I convince you to do that. So let's begin. Let's start off with AI Builder for the Power Platform. Uh, Prior to this session, when I posted about this on Twitter, I received a lot of questions, uh, direct messages actually as to, is this an introduction? Is this going to be, are we going to deep dive into AI Builder? The answer is we will try and cover as much as we can in 50 minutes. The session is focused more around demos than just slides because slides are all available online. And in fact, the Microsoft documentation for AI Builder is pretty much perfect. So I don't want to repeat what's already out there. I want to rather show you what you could do or how you could leverage AI Builder to enhance your Power Platform solutions further. So let's get straight away into the session. And the first thing is we will first look at the agenda for today's session. So let's begin with the agenda. First thing is what is AI Builder? We will look at AI Builder. We will look at the different models that are available as part of AI Builder. Next, we will go ahead and look at a demo, and this demo will use the form processing model along with Power Automate. Then the next demo will be object detection model with Power Apps. So you will notice I'm trying to mix and match with Power Apps and Power Automate because I want to show you how you could leverage these models in both these services. And then we will look at some of the productivity models, also known as the pre-built models with Power Apps and Power Automate. And of course, one of the productivity models, which is one of my favorites that I use a lot, is the business card scanner, which I will quickly demo as part of my last demo as well. So the agenda should be pretty clear that more or less this is a demo heavy session, and I hope you guys really enjoy this one. So first step is what is AI Builder? And before we get into what is AI Builder, it's very important to understand where the Power Platform is today. 
So as part of the Power Platform, we have Power BI, which is the analyze component of the Power Platform. So if you need to visualize your data, that's Power BI. If you need to act on your data, perform CRUD operations, create, read, delete operations, edit operations on your data, that's where you go to Power Apps. If you need to build workflow processes or business processes around your Power Platform solutions, your friend is Power Automate. And the new member to the Power Platform family is Power Virtual Agents, which enables you to build chatbots. And like any good platform, there needs to be a data layer, and I don't think there is any data layer or any data service as powerful as the common data service. There are sessions on CDS as well in the virtual marathon, so do check them out. CDS is not just a database, it's a lot more than that. Of course, in order for us to get our data or connect to our data, no matter where our data lives, we have data connectors. And now to bind all of this together and provide us an additional layer for artificial intelligence to be baked in into the Power Platform, we have the AI Builder. And what's the AI Builder? AI Builder is a low code Power Platform capability that is baked in directly as a service that you can leverage, which will enable you to add artificial intelligence to your Power Platform solutions literally through a point and click experience. You do not need any special coding or data science skills in order to go ahead and leverage artificial intelligence or AI builder in the Power Platform. For the folks who would like to understand more about how this AI builder has come into existence, it's nothing new. The back end is Azure. So if you've ever used any of the cognitive services in Azure, AI Builder is just an encapsulation of that and it's exposed as a service, so you don't need to configure anything in Azure or understand any of the any of the configuration aspects that go behind the Azure Cognitive Services piece in order for you to plug them into the Power Platform. Now that we've understood that it's a low code AI capability in Power Platform, next question is what can I do with this? And in order for you to understand what can you do with it, it is important to understand what are the different types of models or AI capabilities that this platform exposes. The first type of models that this platform exposes are known as the custom AI models. And as the name itself suggests, custom means you, it requires training. It requires a human to sit there and train this model initially as you're designing and building your model. For custom models, you have to train them, you have to provide them data, you have to build them, train them, and once you train them, you publish them, and that model is available for you to use across apps and flows. As part of the custom AI model suite that is currently available as of today, the 27th of May, we have five custom AI models. Number one is form processing. This is related to the vision category of artificial intelligence. It is generally available and it enables you to read and save information from standard documents that look alike. And we will look at this in a full on demo, so don't worry about getting into more details around form processing. Just understand that this is oriented with vision, generally available. It will enable you to fetch metadata from your forms that look alike. The second component is, or the second model, is object detection, which is once again related to the category vision. It is generally available as of now, and what this allows you to do is you can train this model to detect objects, and these objects could be logos, these could be physical objects, this could be brands. Not just train the model, help the model, uh, help the model understand these objects, and then you can leverage them in your apps and flows, wherein it will provide you the response based on the training that you've provided, as well as the count of the number of times it has observed those items in the images that you have provided to this model. The third option is the prediction model, and the prediction model basically predicts what is going to happen, and it provides an output in yes, no fashion. The prediction model is also generally available, and it can only predict data that is available in the common data service. So if you want to leverage the prediction model, your data has to live in CDS. Last week or two weeks ago in the Microsoft Business Application Summit, there were more enhancements announced for the prediction model, and there is a full demo 
video available for the prediction model as well. So please, I highly recommend you to go and check that out. As part of my demos today, I will be covering the form and object detection. There are two other, more, two other models that are currently in preview and both are oriented to language. One of them is category classification, which enables you to categorize text into different categories and entity extraction, which helps to recognize specific information based on the business data that has been provided. These are examples of the custom models that you need to build and train and then leverage across your Power Platform solutions. The next type of model in question are the pre-built models or the ready to use models or also known as the productivity models. These models do not require any training whatsoever and these models are available currently. There are seven of these of which five are generally available. And we will be covering each and every one of these in the form of demos from business card reading to language detection to sentiment analysis. And more or less, the name itself is pretty much self-explanatory as to what sort of information do these models provide. And the demos will make things a lot more clearer for all of us. Straight away, let's get into demos because we've got a lot of demos to cover. So the first thing that we are going to cover as part of AI Builder is how do I get access to AI Builder? So if you go to make.powerapps.com, which is the maker portal for Power Apps, or if you go to flow.microsoft.com, which is the portal where you build your flows, both of them on the left hand railing will have an option for AI Builder. I'm going to try and highlight it right here on the screen. And in fact, let me try and zoom it in for you so you can see it right here. AI builder. Now if you open this, you will have a couple of options right here that you can leverage. Number one is build. Build will enable you to go ahead and build your AI builder models. The second one is called models, which will list out all the models that you have built or models that have been shared with you. Let's go ahead to build. And before we start the build process, let's understand the first scenario that we are covering here. We have a requirement wherein we get invoices and what we what we are trying to achieve here is basically invoice management using the form processing model. Now the form processing model, if I head over to build, there's an option right here for form processing. If I select this model, this will provide me information as to what this model requires. Many a times I've noticed we just give the model a name and hit create. Please don't do that. There are some really good pointers here which will help you to understand what you need to do to get started with every model. So if you look at the steps here, it's very simple. This model will scan documents that look alike, like invoice forms, tax forms, any sort of form documents that look similar. Okay, You can upload those kind of documents here and start training the model. So upload the documents, train the model, and then you define which areas in that document that you have uploaded would you like the model to listen to and train for? And once you define that, all you literally have to do is publish the model and go ahead and leverage this model either in Power Apps or Flows depending upon your use case. At the same time, if you look at the tab on the top, there's an option for examples as well where they've given you examples of how these documents are. So here's an example of a very sample invoice document, right? And notice that this document has date, a due date, a customer name that the invoice is being billed to, and how the model goes ahead and detects fields as I upload these documents and I train my model. There's also a tab for best practices, which clearly highlights the things that you need to do in order to train the model. And the number one best practice for form processing is your documents need to have a similar layout. You cannot use documents where the layouts keep changing. I've received a lot of questions before. I have three different types of clients who send me three different types of invoices. In that scenario, build three different models. Don't leverage one model and try and encompass everything into it. Now, having said or having set the precedent for this scenario, let's take an example of some standard invoice documents that I have. So I will go ahead and plug a very simple invoice document onto my screen. I have this fake organization that I created called RD Enterprises. And as part of this invoice that I receive, I have an invoice number, a date. I have the client name or the customer name who I am billing this invoice to. 
I also have tabular data in here which can differ based on the different services that the customer has acquired as part of the invoice. That's how the basic, the basic premise of my documents look like. And if I open a second document as well, it will more or less be the same. However, as you can see, my customer is different. The training that they've requested is different. The data will be different, but the format looks and feels exactly the same. Now, in order for you to go ahead and leverage this model, once you go to AI Builder, once you click on form processing and click on create, first thing you need to do is give this model a name. So I'm going to call this forms processing invoice and I will click on create. Now the moment you click on create, this will take you to the AI Builder component for that specific model, the editor component. Now as part of this process for the form processing process, it requires at least a minimum of five documents. And all of this information, what are the requirements, how many, what type of documents can I upload to train the model, how many documents, all of this is provided in the docs.microsoft.com links and all of them I will provide to you in my slide deck. It's a, it's, it's a part of my slide deck as well at the end. Now in this scenario, I will click on add documents and you can upload documents from SharePoint, Azure Blob, or in my case, I have my documents held locally. So I will go ahead and train this model with the minimum number of documents that it requires. So I'm training this with five documents and I'm going to click on upload. Now all these documents are being uploaded as part of the form processing model. And once I upload the minimum required documents, I can go ahead and hit the analyze button. The moment you click on analyze, the model is now, which is basically artificial intelligence. It's basically scanning all these documents and trying to find out if there are any key value pairs in this structure that I have uploaded that the model can identify. Once it goes ahead and analyzes all that information, it will provide that data back to me and I can select which pieces of metadata from my invoice I would like to capture as part of this model. This can take up to two or three minutes. And once you decide the different pieces that you need, you can go ahead and train your model. So in my scenario, it's gone ahead and analyzed. Now I can select my component or my model. And as you can see, the model has identified these key aspects. Now it may or may not identify every aspect on my form. Like for example, as you can see out here, initially it is not putting this border around it. So if I zoom in just to show you, you'll notice there are borders around certain things, but certain things don't have the borders. Now the new feature that's introduced as part of AI Builder is even if things are not detected by the model itself, you can go and teach the model or train the model. So if I feel like this is a very important attribute that I want to fetch as part of my forms processing component, I can go ahead and just draw a boundary around this as I just did and give this a name. So I'm going to give this a valid name. And in my case, my field name is going to be invoice number. And I'm going to click on save. That means now the model has been trained to understand that this is invoice number. Now in this scenario, it's already picked tabular data. So I can just select this and this is a table. I'm going to say yes, read the table. In this case, here's the date. I'm going to click this, call this invoice date and so and so forth. You can do this for any component that you see on the form. And once you do this, you will hit on confirm. Once you hit confirm, the model now understands that these are the kind of elements that you're looking out for. And this it did so only in the first document that I uploaded. And this is highlighted right here at the bottom. Now I have to do the same thing for the other four documents as well that I uploaded because I have to train the model. Now notice in document number two, it says the invoice number it's not able to understand. So it's asking me to draw it in the document. If I click on this, I can go ahead and just highlight where in the document is the invoice number. So I'm training the model. It's right here and you're good to go. The invoice date is right here and you're good to go. Notice the, the tabular information, all the other information it has already understood because those were things that it already pre-detected. The, the fields that you specify the model that the model does not pre-detect are the ones that you have to go through each document that you've uploaded just for training, which is not a lot. And you got to go ahead and train the model to understand what those fields are. And once you complete all of this, you just have to hit done. Train your model and publish your model. Three button clicks literally is all what you have to do. And once you go through this entire process of building this model and training the model, 
Next, when you head over to AI Builder and you head over to the Models tab, in my case, I already have my model of invoices of invoices built right here. So this is the model that I pre-created, and this model has all these fields that I have trained my model for. This is my actual invoices model that I pre-created prior to the session. Now, previously, you had to go and figure out ways to create or use this model in Power Apps and Flow. Now, there is an option known as Use Model. You can literally click on Create an App or Create a Flow. This will automatically go and create a template flow and a template app for you, wherein everything will be pre-configured and it will help you get started with your scenario. Now, my scenario is a little different, so I want to show you what I was able to do with the same model. I have a document library in SharePoint, and this library is the library that holds all the invoices. I also have a flow that I have created, and in this flow, this flow gets triggered when a new document is added into the same invoices library. So every time a file comes here, the flow gets triggered. And as part of this process, I am calling this action and flow called predict. And predict is what will enable you to call any model, be it the pre-built models or your custom models in your environment right here. All you have to do is pick your model amongst the choice of options that's available. My model was called invoices. I've picked that model. I am providing it PDF files and the content is coming from SharePoint. Once I predict, next step what I will go ahead and incorporate is I am updating the properties of my SharePoint document and all this metadata, the customer name, the balance due, all of these are dynamically available for me because I have actually trained my model with those same fields that I am able to leverage in Flow. And if you were to leverage the same thing in Power Apps, all of this data would be available for you in Power Apps as well. That's how simple it is. Literally, it took me five minutes to build this entire flow. The key to understand or the key takeaway here is in order for you to use this predict action, your flows have to have to be built in a solution. You have to create a solution and build your flows. If you build your flows outside of the realm of a solution, you will not get this action called predict. Please remember that. Now, because I have already set things up and I wanted to show you what the back end looks like, what the model looks like. Now, if I go ahead to SharePoint and if I just upload files and imagine a use case wherein I am an organization that receives 5,000 invoices a day. Imagine the amount of manual work I would have to go through and incorporate. In this example, I have just uploaded six invoice documents directly into my SharePoint library. I have a flow that is listening to whenever items are added in the SharePoint library. And the moment an item comes in, the flow will trigger. The flow will then take the document, send it over to the model. The model will analyze, provide the data points that I trained the model for, return those data points back to me. And if the demo gods are with me today, what's going to happen is the flow is going to fetch that data and it will push that data into all the columns that you're looking at right here. That means I don't have to go ahead and look at the documents manually and feed the data in. Automatically, all that data should be coming in. Now, if I go back to the flow and let's check if the flow is running or not, uh, it says the flow ran 28 seconds ago. So let's just go ahead and refresh the screen. And looks like the demo gods were with me. So as you can see in this scenario, none of this data points were entered by me. I actually trained the model to learn how these data points are. And just to prove my point that I have not just randomly put in any numbers here, let's pick one example. In this case, invoice number 4672, I have a high profile customer for tennis fans, Rafael Nadal. Now, if I head back to my invoices library, here's 4672 and look at the name of the customer, exactly accurately fetched by the model. The balance due is 150, the due date is the 28th. And if you look at the due date right here, it is the 28th. If you look at the balance due, it's 150. Not just that, even if you look at the tabular information, Nadal requested for Power Apps training and Power Automate training, two, two Power Apps trainings and one Power Automate training. If I go ahead and click on this link right here, this takes me to another list in SharePoint wherein I have the tabular information maintained. And you can see that exact same tabular information is available here. That's how you can leverage form processing to automate your business processes. This is one very simple, simple, simple example. 
If you truly want to look at this entire example step by step, I have it on my YouTube channel. I've actually gone through the entire process step by step, building the SharePoint library to automating the flow every step. If you would like to see that, feel free to go ahead and check out that video. All right, this was demo number one. We covered the form processing model with Power Automate. The next model that I will cover is object detection with Power Apps. Once again, I will head back to AI Builder and go back to the build aspect of AI Builder. Let me go and close ahead, close some of the tabs to ease off some of the stress. All right, so we have object detection right here. Once again, always read the information that is being provided. Object detection enables you to recognize and count things. Recognize and count things. So, if you see right here, if I click on object detection, the minimum number of images that it requires is 15. So I will go ahead and call this sample object detection. And this is I'm training my model to detect objects. Once I click on create, once again, this will take me to the editor experience for object detection. Now, a few months ago, the only option you had was upload your document and tag your document, but now things are different. You can even train the model more smartly. You can tell the model that you're looking out for some common objects that you've captured or you're looking out for typical objects that are on shelves. And th this could be inventory materials. This could be uh, store objects. As you can see, there are demos provided right here. Plus, you can also train the model for brand logos. So depending upon your use case, you can pick any one of these options and if you're getting confused just go ahead and pick the common objects option hit next and the next thing is it will ask you what are the names of the objects that you're detecting now there are two ways and you can do this you can get the names from a database or you can manually go in and plug the names so let's say in my case i'm going to train this for cadbury i'm actually going ahead to build a uh, chocolate inventory so i'm a company i'm a I am a big fan of chocolates and let's say I have a store where I sell chocolates and I want to manage the inventory of my chocolates. All I have to do is literally just add my tags right here of the different chocolate types, hit next. And for each tag, I have to upload up to 15 images and train my model. Of course, we have no time here. This is a demo. So what I will do for this scenario is I will just quickly go ahead and upload 15 images of chocolates for Cadbury or dairy milk. Once I upload these images, I can then go next and I have to tag these images. And the way you tag it is you have to click on every image and then draw a border around your image where you where you're observing it in that space and tag it to the tag that you've specified. I just have one tag, so it's only showing up one. If I had multiple tags, all those tags would show up and I can pick and choose and accordingly tag my model. And you have to do this for every image that you have uploaded. Once you do that, train your model, publish your model, exactly the same steps as before. The key here is object detection. You have to train the model. Now, if I go back to my models, I already have pre-created a model for object detection, and that model is right here. And this model has been trained to understand specific objects. And my objects are coming from CDS. That's my data store, the common data service. And right here, I have a entity equivalent to a table in SQL for folks who, who are not familiar with CDS. If I head over to the data right here, and if I look at all my custom fields, I have a very simple entity which has the name, which is the name of all my chocolates. I have an image that points to an image on the web. I have the ingredients of my chocolates that I'm selling. I have a track of the number of items that I have and the sugar level that uh, that uh, is uh, is accounted for when you consume any one of these chocolates. That's the basic premise of the information that I'm holding in a data source, which is my inventory. Now if I head over to my app, I have an app right here and the app is called inventory app. Let me go ahead and edit this app. Now, in the previous example, I showed you form processing with Power Automate. You could have used that with Power Apps as well. In this scenario, I am showing a demo of object detection with Power Apps. Nothing stops you from uploading an image to Flow 
and sending that image to the same model so that flow can tell you what objects it has detected and what are the counts of the objects. Now, as part of AI Builder, I am in the context of Power Apps right now. If you want to leverage AI Builder, you just have to go to Insert. There is a tab option right here called AI Builder, and you can drop any of these models that you want. In my case, I have dropped the object detection model, which gives me this control right here. And all you need to do is tag it or connect it to the AI model in question. I have just one model. That's the model right here. The model has to be published. It's available for me to leverage. Now in my scenario, I will go ahead and play this app. In this app, on the left-hand side, I have my current inventory. Now, if I want to detect objects, if I click on detect, now please note I am on a browser. I'm on my desktop right now. So when you click on detect, this will force you to upload images. If I was using this on a mobile device, it will actually open the camera on your mobile device or it will give you a choice if you want to pick an existing image or open your camera and take a live image of what you're looking at in your own space. In this scenario, let's say I go ahead and I pick this one chocolate and I upload it right here. Notice how the model has gone ahead and detected that yes, this is a Cadbury and it's provided to me right here and I can either add it to my inventory or remove it. I have eight Cadbury's, so let's go ahead and add this to my inventory. It updates my inventory, it goes up to nine. And this model not just detects one objects. Let's say a scenario wherein I have a mixture of chocolates. It can also go ahead and detect things like that. And the detection or the confidence of the model depends upon how well you train the model. The more images you upload, the better training you provide the model, the stronger the model gets. Now, not just scenarios like these, I can also leverage it in a more powerful to provide a more powerful experience for my users. Once again, I'm leveraging the same object detection model. In this case, it's gone ahead and detected the same items, but notice at the same time for Cadbury, it is giving me all the ingredients. It's letting me know if this contains nuts or not. It also tells me the sugar quantity associated with this before consuming. So if I'm diabetic, it's better I be aware of that. If I am someone who has who has an allergy to nuts, it's good to know about it. At the same time, I also have a custom API call that I have made through Power Apps, which looks at the food department administration uh, portal in uh, in the United States. It's an actual API that you can call and it will let you know if there are any recalls on these items in specific states. So very, very important. Uh, th so there are many, many things you can do with this, but object detection in general is you upload images. It will let you know what it has detected and how many. All right, moving ahead to the next one. Uh, John, can you just confirm if you can hear me fine? John. Hello. Yeah, you sound great. OK, I sound great. Perfect. Just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure yeah. we are on track. Sorry, there's uh -huh. no audience. There's no live Q&A, so it's difficult to judge. All right. So these no were two examples of the custom models. We covered object detection. We covered form processing. We covered one scenario with Power Apps. We covered one scenario with Power Automate. Now, not just these models. I mentioned there are a lot of pre-built productivity based models that you can leverage. Now let's go ahead and see where we can utilize these models. So the first example that I would like to provide is sentiment analysis. And I will provide this example with respect to Power Automate, which is flows. Now please note that whenever you're dealing with flows and if you want to leverage any of these models I mentioned earlier, you have to build your flows in a solution. So in my case, I have a solution. I have called the solution AI Builder. I have a very simple flow here called sentiment analysis. Very, very simple. Nothing special about this flow. This flow is reading data whenever a new Microsoft form is submitted. So I have a survey form that I have created anonymously wherein customers come in and provide feedback. The moment I get this feedback, I have a description column in the feedback because I would like to know what do the customers think about my product or how was their customer experience when they actually came into my store to look at my products. In that case, once again, I can leverage the predict model and this time I can even pick the pre-built models. I have picked sentiment analysis right here and I have provided the text associated with it. And what this model provides you is an output, a dynamic output known as global sentiment, and it tells me if the sentiment of the user is positive, negative, or mixed. And all I've done right here is if the sentiment of the individual who is providing the response is not positive, then please go ahead and send me an email, notify me so I can go back to the customer, talk to the customer, and hopefully go ahead and resolve his issue, his or her issue. So 
Let's go now to forms processing. So I'll head over to Microsoft Forms. If you've not used Microsoft Forms before, it's great for creating quick surveys and quizzes. Really, really useful tool in Office 365. Remember, this is the M365 conference. We need to cover everything. All right, let's go to preview and let's assume I am a customer right now who comes here and looks at the form. Now, many a times we have these standard options, right? Extremely satisfied, not satisfied, happy with the product, not happy with the product. And trust me, many a times people don't care. All they care about is, yeah, I was satisfied. OK, extremely well. You know, they're just literally clicking through. Sometimes they don't even read these things. But many a times the magic is in the text that they enter. And in this case, I have forced them to provide me some additional comments. Now, this could be as generic as good. Or something like bad, or maybe something in natural language like your customer representative was very rude. Right, so maybe maybe my customer rep was not so good with the customer who came in and now notice I have purpose. This is on purpose, by the way. I have purposely misspelled customer because I want to show you that the sentiment analysis reads data in natural language. So even if somebody makes a mistake or misspells things, that's not an issue. Once I click on submit, this data gets submitted. My flow is listening whenever a new Microsoft form record comes into the system anonymously or authenticated depends upon your use case. Once I get that response, if the sentiment is not positive, if the sentiment is not positive, it will go ahead and send me an email. And as you can see, it has sent me an email and I have not decorated this email at all. This is just a very simple example. It clearly tells me that this was the comment that the user put and the sentiment detected was not positive. So it tells me that the customer representative was very rude. So you can leverage this in flows and you can leverage all of these models that I will be demoing next in Power Apps and flows as well. Many a times I've seen I've seen folks who tell me, yeah, I can use this in Power Apps. It would be so great if I could use it in flow. Well, you can. The key is to build your flow in a solution. If you don't do that, you won't get these options. Now heading back to Power Apps. I have that same sentiment analysis model available right here as well. Now, in order for you to leverage these predefined models, there is one little trick. You have to go to files. You have to go to settings. You have to go to advanced settings and right here on the advanced settings under preview features, there is one known as AI builder formulas. If this is turned off, you will not get the predefined models. If you turn this on, all those models will be exposed for you to leverage within your apps. Please note this is in preview, so not to be used in production scenarios until this goes into general availability, which it will be very soon. Now if I head back to my app right here, in this scenario, all I have created as part of this screen, and I'll try and zoom in, is literally I've created a text field in, in Power Apps, and I have something known as detect sentiment. And right here, once I enable that setting, I have access to all the pre-built models. One of the models is analyze the sentiment and all it needs is the text and I've just given it the text right here. Now if I play the app, let's go and try different things. I am very happy today. What's the sentiment? It's positive. A little bit of gimmicky things in Power Apps done by me to give you the answer, but you see it's smiling because it's happy. I had a rough day today, right? I had a rough day today. They were trying to detect the sentiment. The sentiment is sad. So the same experience, the same sentiment detection is right here. Also, if you look at the things that this model provides, is it gives you sentiments, responses as positive, negative, neutral, or mixed. It also gives you a score between zero and one. So zero means the model was not so confident when detecting it. One means the model was super confident in detecting it. So scores closer to one means the model is more confident. OK, and how do I see all of this? Well, go to detect sentiment and I'm storing this in a variable right here. If I double click on this variable, this is a trick. If you double click on this, if you open this, it will give you all the details of the sentiment right here. So as you can see, it tells me the sentiment is negative and the scores are available in the form of a record. And if I want to see this in more detail, I can go to view, go to variables. I have stored this in a global variable. Here is my sentiment detected right here. If I click on this, and if I click on the record, it's giving me that the sentiment is negative. If I want to look at the score, I can look at the score, which is 0 0.96. That means it's extremely confident. It's very close to one. It's extremely confident that the sentiment was negative. It is not so confident that it was a neutral sentiment, and it is 100% sure that this is not a positive sentiment whatsoever.
So you don't have to go live and die by live and die by the sword of what the model gives you. You can even create your own levels of of acceptance and then accordingly provide the desired results to your users. Extremely powerful sentiment analysis. The next one is language detection. Very, very simple. It allows you to detect language. If I type in English, of course, the language is going to output as English, which is EN. Of course, I have done my homework, so here's some Hindi language right here for you guys. And if I detect this, this says HI, which is Hindi. Now the funny thing is this also means hi, kind of in Hindi. But HI stands for Hindi. So any language that you plug in here, your model will be able to detect the language of the text that has been provided. And once again, the code for this is extremely simple. AI builder, detect language, provide the text, storing it in a variable, and this is what the variable outputs. The name, which is the language, and then the score. Remember, it keeps giving you the score between 0 and 1. 1 means supremely confident. This definitely is the Hindi language. All right, we are racing through. We are racing through. The next one, text recognition. Text recognition enables you to do OCR. What is OCR, Raza? OCR is optical character recognition. What you can do in this model is, if I upload an image, so let's go ahead and go to OCR and let's upload our one wonderful Microsoft 365 virtual marathon splash screen right here. What it will do is it will go through the image and scan the text and notice it has detected the text right here. It's highlighting the detected text as well and providing you all that response back in a tabular fashion. So you can upload images and it also understands hand handwriting by the way. Even if I upload a bad signature like the signature I have signed right here, it can also give you handwritten text right here. So it helps you to go ahead and perform optical character recognition. And the way you do that is once again very simple. All you need to do is when I select OCR, it does the optical character recognition, and this is the results that it provides. It provides the bounding box that tells you where in the image it found the item. What's the page number? So if, you're, if you've uploaded something that has multiple pages, it will tell you in which page number it found it, and also the text that it detected. So if you want to use OCR features, they are natively baked in now to Power Apps and Flows. Just directly go and leverage these pre-built models. The next one is key phrase extraction. This one is very similar to excerpts that you normally see. So if you have a big uh, description, you have a big text, you need the key phrases to come out. Go ahead and use this model. So let's say here's my phrase. The food was delicious and there were wonderful stuff. Bad English but no problem. Let's go ahead and click on extract. Now, according to me, the two keywords out here definitely are the wonderful stuff because the stuff was wonderful and definitely the food. So it's gone ahead and grabbed that piece of information and provided to me. Here's another bad sentence. Today the weather is sunny and I am ta I'm taking my dog out for a walk. Let's extract this one. What are the key talking points here? Dog, weather and walk. These are the three key points that I am talking about. This looks a little gimmicky, Reza, no problem. Let's talk about a more serious scenario, customer experience. Maybe someone responds on a form, on a Microsoft form and says, order number so-and-so was very slow, poor customer support. They were asking to cancel my order. They asked me to wait for hours. This is a great example. I can detect the sentiment first, sentiment is bad, then run it through my key phase detection to see what were the typical issues. Issues are order numbers, slow delivery, poor customer support was late grab all that information out and leverage them. Once again, all of the information that is provided by this model, you can go and read what it does. Very, very, very simple. And all the data is provided here. It just gives you results and the phrases. That's it. It tells you what it has detected and the individual phrases. Moving ahead, two more demos to go. Entity extraction. This one or this model basically detects certain entities that it supports and you can even build your own custom entities like age, city, color, and there are these standard set of entities that Microsoft has pre-built. Anyone who's worked with power virtual agents with, will connect with entities very, very soon, very soon. Now if I plug in that same text, order number so and so, very slow delivery, poor customer support, this time notice what the entity extraction model gives me. It tells me it identified a number. Number is an entity, so it's looking for numbers. It found the number and it also found a duration. 
This is purely natural language. It found a duration type and that is two hours. Extremely smart in what it can do. Let's try another piece of information right here. On May 5th, it was sunny outside with 86 degrees and the reflection of the blue sky on the ocean was predominant. Bad English again. Let's extract. Date, May 5th, it picked it, perfect. Temperature, 86 degrees, it picked it, perfect. Color, blue. Look at how it is extracting the entity points from your data source. Now think about this. My name is Reza from Houston, Texas. I work for Catapult Systems and my website is so and so. Extract. Once again, look at how it extracts. The person's name, Reza. The city, Houston. The state, Texas. Why? Because all of these are predefined entities and you can build your own entities and customize this as well and expand this. And finally, category classification. This one currently only and only works for customer feedback. You can build your own, but the out of the box one only works for customer feedback currently. More models are coming in future. So of course, everything has to be around customer feedback. So in this case, I'm giving a bad feedback. And if I classify this, this will tell me that this is related to customer service. Or if I ask a question which says, how much does the pizza cost? This is related to pricing and billing. So you see how it is categorizing to that text. So you can train your model to understand natural language and categorize it. And honestly, if you ask me, if you mix and match these, you can come across with some really powerful use cases in AI Builder, especially in Power Platform. Finally, moving on to the final part of my demo today, before we go back to the slides, business card to the business card scanning piece. This is an out of the box, out of the box control that's available for you via AI Builder. All I have to do right here is just go and scan a business card. So I'm going to go scan a business card. And of course, you would have guessed it. I already have my business card right here. So this will go and scan the business card and give you key data points from your business card from phone numbers to emails to channels to whatever it is. And not just that, I can even push it to Outlook from Power Apps. So if I go to my Outlook, if I look at my folder right here in Outlook, and if I look at my business cards, I currently only have one business card, which is Bob Wallace. Let's say I met Reza at an event. I scanned his business card through my mobile device and I added his business card directly to my Outlook. If I go to Outlook and once again, if the demo gods are with me, they've been throughout. Let's see if this one works. If everything goes through well, Reza's name will populate right here and it's right here. Power Platform, Reza Dorani, that's my number. That's my job title. All the information is in there. That's the business card scanning component and we are almost up to time. I have a minute more to go, so let me just complete my slides. So these were the demos. Learning resources, this slide deck will be made available, so please look at the guided learning, especially the licensing. There is also an AI Builder calculator available. Do look at that. I've also put a link to my YouTube channel around the AI Builder form processing model that I demoed earlier. Thank you so much for joining this and more so active on YouTube. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the link to my YouTube channel right there. And please also go ahead and provide feedback. It really helps us to organize these events better in future. You have two kinds of feedback. speaker feedback that is for Reza. Please provide constructive feedback. Don't say Reza was bad, Reza was good. It's not going to help Reza. Say Reza was good because he covered a lot of scenarios or Reza was bad because that is constructive feedback. And I would expect you guys to do the same thing for the event as well. This event has been organized with a lot of hard work by a lot of folks. So please, please, please be a little generous when you're giving your feedback for the event. Don't be generous on my side. That's fine. Also, we are giving away raffle prizes today. So we're giving away three Oculus Quests. I would like to apply for this definitely. If you have not done, there's the link right there at the bottom, bit.ly M365 raffle. This is case sensitive. Bit.ly is case sensitive. If you're MS Capital, you won't get to it. Please make sure you provide your details there and you enter to win a chance to win the raffle. And now the most important slide of the day, something that honestly I will be doing right after this meeting, and I promise you I'll do this. Please go ahead and support this charitable organization that M365 virtual conference is covering. So please, please, please go ahead and donate in whatever capacity you can. We are all in a crisis. We are all in quarantine. If you have the capacity to help, please go ahead and help. And thank you so much, so much for watching the session. I have another one tomorrow. So if you're not bored of me today, come back tomorrow.